Hello and welcome to this presentation of the STM32U5 Reset and Clock Controller, or RCC. The STM32U5 Reset and Clock Controller manages the system and peripheral clocks. This slide presents the three reset types and sources of reset. STM32U5 microcontrollers embed six internal oscillators, two oscillators for an external crystal or resonator, and up to five phase-locked loops, or PLLs. Many peripherals have their own clock, independent of the system clock. The STM32U5 RCC provides high flexibility in the choice of clock sources, allowing the system designer to meet both power consumption and accuracy requirements. The numerous independent peripheral clocks allow a designer to adjust the system power consumption without impacting the communication baud rates, and also to keep some peripherals active in low power modes. Some peripherals support autonomous mode. They are able to generate a kernel clock request and an AHB APB bus clock request when needed in order to operate and update their status register even in stop mode. The system clock can be derived from the high-speed internal 16 MHz RC oscillator, HSI-16, from the high-speed external 4 to 50 MHz oscillator, HSC, from the multi-speed oscillator system, MSIS, or from the PLL-1 RCK output of the PLL-1. The AHB clock, called HCLK, is derived by dividing the system clock by a programmable prescaler. The APB clocks, called PCLK1, PCLK2, and PCLK3, are generated by dividing the AHP clock by programmable prescalers. The RTC clock is generated by the low-speed external 32768 kHz oscillator, LSC, the low-speed internal 32 kHz RC oscillator, LSI, or the HSC divided by 32. This selection cannot be modified without resetting the backup domain. The LSC can remain enabled in all low-power modes and in VBAT mode. The LSI can remain enabled in all modes including VBAT, except in shutdown mode. Various clocks can be output on input-input-output pads. The microcontroller clock output feature enables the external output of one of these nine clocks. HSI-16, HSC, MSI System, MSI Kernel, LSI, LSC, SysCLK, PLL1RCK, and HSI-48. The low-speed clock output feature enables the external output of the LSI or LSC clock, which is driven onto the low-speed output clock, or LSCO pad. This output remains available in all stop modes, standby and shutdown modes, but not in VBAT mode. Note that LSI is not available in shutdown mode and that the LSI frequency is selectable through a control register, either 32 kHz or 250 Hz. Choosing 250 Hz allows lower consumption. This slide describes the features of five oscillators. The high-speed external oscillator provides a safe crystal system clock. The HSC supports a 4 to 50 MHz external crystal or ceramic resonator, as well as an external source in bypass mode. A clock security system automatically detects an HSC failure. In this case, a non-maskable interrupt is generated and a break input can be sent to the timers in order to put critical applications, such as motor control, in a safe state. When an HSC failure is detected, the system clock is automatically switched to an internal oscillator, either HSI-16 or MSIS, so that the application software does not stop in the case of crystal failure. The high-speed internal oscillator is a 16 MHz RC oscillator, which provides 1% accuracy in fast wake-up times. The HSI-16 is trimmed during production testing and can also be user-trimmed to take into account temperature and voltage variations. The HSI-16 can be automatically awoken when exiting any stop mode in order to make it available for peripherals when it is not used as the system clock. The HSI-48 is generated from an internal 48 MHz RC oscillator. 48 MHz is a canonical frequency for USB full-speed module. 
HSI-48 can also be used as the reference clock for the RNG and SD-MMC modules. The HSI-48 is associated with a special clock recovering system, CRC, circuitry that dynamically adjusts the frequency according to the receipt of a USB full start of frame packet or the LSC or an external signal. The secure high-speed internal 48 MHz SHSI oscillator drives the secure AES coprocessor or SAS. The low-speed internal LSI oscillator is the unique clock of the independent watchdog and can be the clock of the RTC. It can be kept running in all stop and standby modes. The clock frequency is either 32 kHz or 250 Hz. When using the independent watchdog, 32 kHz operation is selected and forced on. This table summarizes the HSI-16 oscillator electrical characteristics. The values are the same for all series. Minimum, typical and maximum frequencies are indicated for different operating conditions. The HSI-16 frequency can be trimmed in the application with a typical step of 29 kHz. Startup time and stabilization times are also indicated. Note that the HSI-16 has a faster startup time than the HSE crystal oscillator. Finally, the table provides the typical and maximum consumption of the HSI-16, considering that the HSI-16 can be switched off using the HSI on bit. STM32U5 supports two multiple speed internal oscillators the MSI system or MSIS and the MSI kernel or MSIK. MSIS is one of the oscillators that can be selected as the input clock of the PLLs. MSIK generates a clock that is independent of the system clock and therefore convenient for peripherals that require a fixed clock while the system clock may vary over time due to dynamic voltage and frequency scaling. MSI is made up of four internal RC oscillators. MSIRC0 at 48 MHz, MSIRC1 at 4 MHz, MSIRC2 at 3072 MHz, and MSIRC3 at 400 kHz. Each oscillator feeds a prescaler, providing a division by 1, 2, 3, or 4. MSIS and MSIK frequencies are independently selected by programming the control register RCCICSCR1. In addition, when used in PLL mode with the LSC, the MSI provides a very accurate clock source that can be used by the USB full-speed device on some STM32U5 series MCUs. The MSIS clock is used as the system clock after restart from reset, wake up from standby and shutdown low power modes. After restart from reset or when exiting shutdown modes, the MSIS and MSIK frequencies are set to their default value 4 MHz. When exiting the standby mode, the MSIS and MSIK frequency range is from 1 to 4 MHz. When exiting stop 0, 1 and 2 modes by issuing an interrupt or a wake-up event, HSI-16 is selected as the system clock if the bit stop clock is set. MSIS is selected as system clock if stop book is cleared. Wake up time is shorter when HSI 16 is selected as the wake up system clock. MSI selection allows a wake up at a higher frequency, up to 24 MHz. The last point describes the two MSI modes, sampled and continuous. MSI is in continuous mode when the internal regulator is in voltage range 1, 2, or 3. The MSI is also in continuous mode when the internal regulator is in range 4 and low power modes when MSI BIAS equals to 0. MSI is in sample mode when the regulator is in voltage range 4 and in stop 1 or stop 2 mode when MSI BIAS equals to 1. By default, MSI is in continuous mode to maintain the accuracy of the output clocks. Setting the MSI BIAS bit reduces the power consumption of MSI in range 4, but decreases its accuracy. When a 32768 kHz external oscillator is present in the application, it is possible to configure either the MSIS or the MSIK in PLL mode. 
In the case that MSIS and MSIK ranges are generated from the same MSIRC source, the PLL mode is applied on both MSIS and MSIK. When configured in PLL mode, the MSIS or MSIK automatically calibrates itself thanks to the LSE. Consequently, the MSI accuracy is the LSE crystal accuracy. At 48 MHz, MSIK in PLL mode can be used for the USB full speed device on some STM32 U5 series MCUs, avoiding the need of an external high speed crystal. The figure on the right assumes that MSI PLL mode is enabled for MSIK and MSIS when the frequency is 24 MHz. In this case, the MSIRC0 oscillator clock is calibrated. The second frequency that can be selected for MSIS, 2 MHz, is provided by MSIRC1 and therefore PLL mode could not be used. The stabilization time of the MSI oscillators configured in PLL mode depends on the MSI PLL fast bit. When this bit is 0, 0 0.8 millisecond is required, whereas when this bit is 1, the time is reduced to two cycles when LSC is already enabled and stabilization was previously done. This table summarizes the MSI oscillator's electrical characteristics. Minimum typical and maximum frequency values are indicated for operation at 30 degrees Celsius. The MSI frequency can be trimmed in the application with a typical step of 0.4% of the frequency. The drift according to temperature and voltage variations are indicated. These variations can be monitored in order to dynamically update the calibration parameter. Startup and stabilization times are also provided. Up to five PLLs integrated in RCC are completely independent. The three main PLLs have the same input stage. The input clock is either HSI 16 or MSIS or HSC. PLLs can be used to multiply the frequency of these reference clocks. On the main PLL block diagram, the PLL input frequency must be between 4 and 16 MHz and the frequency at the VCO must be between 128 and 544 MHz. The value of the divider located after the clock multiplexer must be chosen accordingly. See the PLL X RGE parameter in the figure. The PLLs can work either in integer or fractional mode, which is an important new feature of the STM32U5. The 13-bit Sigma Delta modulator fine-tunes the VCO frequency in steps of 11 to 0.3 ppm. The Sigma Delta modulator can be updated on the fly without generating frequency overshoots on PLL outputs. This table indicates the maximum frequencies according to the voltage ranges. In voltage range 1, the maximum performance is obtained, a 160 MHz system clock, possibly 200 MHz, for the octo-SPI kernel clock. In voltage range 2 and 3, the maximum system frequency is respectively 110 and 55 MHz. In voltage range 4, the maximum frequency is 25 MHz and must be provided by an oscillator as PLLs are disabled. The 32768 kHz low-speed external oscillator can be used with an external quartz or resonator or with an external clock source in bypass mode. It has the advantage of providing a low-power but highly accurate clock source to the real-time clock peripheral RTC, for clock calendar or other timing functions. The oscillator driving capability is programmable. Four modes are available from ultra-low power mode with a consumption of only 510 nanoamps to high driving mode. If the LSC is used by other peripherals or functions than RTC and TAMP, the LSC sys en bit must be set. The peripherals that can be clocked by the LSC are the USARTs, the low-power UART1, the low-power timers, the Cortex-M33 SysTIC, the DAC1. A clock security system monitors for failure of the LSC oscillator. It detects a missing clock or over-frequency. The CSS on LSC works in all modes, including VBAT. It is also functional during system reset, excluding power-on reset. On all STM32U5 products, 
except on STM32U575-585, RevX, CSS detection signal can generate an interrupt with wake-up from stop capability. The CSS on LSC failure is connected to a temporary vent. In case of failure, the application can switch the RTC clock to LSI. This is not automatic. This slide highlights some interesting features of the STM32U5 clock architecture. ADC1, ADC2, ADC4 and DAC1 modules share the same clock, which is the output of a multiplexer whose inputs are SysCLK, HCLK, PLL2RCK, HSC, HSI16 and MSIK. This shared clock scheme minimizes the VRF plus perturbations in the case of simultaneous conversions. The OctoSPI and HSPI input clocks are allowed up to 200 MHz when the PLL is used. This clock is faster than the Cortex-M33 clock in order to maintain a high performance when the core executes code from the external OctoSPI memory. ICLK is the clock of the USB OTG full-speed module and one of the clocks that can be selected for the SD-MMC controllers, the other one being PLL1PCK. A multiplexer selects the source of ICLK, either MSIK, HSI48, PLL1QCK, or PLL2QCK. Some peripherals support autonomous mode. They remain active while the microcontroller is in a lower power stop mode. These peripherals generate a kernel clock request and an AHP APB bus clock request when needed in order to operate and update their status register even in stop mode. Depending on the peripheral configuration, either a DMA request or an interrupt can be associated to the peripheral event. Upon an AHB or APB bus clock request from an autonomous peripheral, either the MSI or HSI 16 oscillator is woken up. If the autonomous peripheral is configured with DMA requests enabled, a data transfer is performed thanks to the AHB APB clock. The bus clocks, as well as the oscillator, HSI 16 or MSI, are automatically switched off as soon as the transfer is finished if no other peripheral requests it. The device automatically goes back in stop mode. The autonomous peripherals mapped on AHB1, AHB2, APB1 and APB2 belong to the CPU domain, also called CD, and are autonomous in stop 0 and stop 1 only with the GPDMA1 and SRAM1, SRAM2, SRAM3, SRAM4, SRAM5 or SRAM6. The autonomous peripherals mapped on AHB3 or APB3 belong to the Smart Run domain, also called SRD, and are autonomous in STOP0, STOP1 and STOP2 with the LPDMA1 and SRAM4. This figure indicates which memories, masters and peripherals belong to the Smart Run domain, which remains fully functional in STOP2 low power mode. The SRD includes peripherals connected to AHB3 and APB3. The masters are the CD bus matrix, which is idle in stop 2 mode, and the low power DMA1 that can be used to transfer data from peripheral to SRAM4 or from SRAM4 to peripheral without requiring to wake up the CPU domain. Note that the presentation on power management describes various scenarios involving DMA and peripherals working in autonomous mode. For more details, please refer to application note AN2867, an oscillator design guide for STM8S, STM8A and STM32 microcontrollers and application note AN5676, which explains how to calibrate STM32U5 internal RC oscillators.